Mm -hmm. My guest is Mary Jo Courier from downtown Kingston Business Improvement Area. So good to see you again. Nice to see you too. You had a busy summer. We had a very busy summer. Yep, top to bottom. There were uh, events going on every day and, and a lot of promenades and buskers. It was pretty crazy. It was really crazy and uh, a lot of tourists. The tourists, uh, tourists have come back, at least at City Hall. It was busy. Oh, that's good very, to hear. Very busy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got good stuff coming up too. Tell me about it. We do. So anybody in marketing knows you start talking about Christmas in August. So <laughs> we're all really tired of Christmas because <laughs> yeah, we've already, already planned it. But I thought this would be a good opportunity to share it uh, with the rest of the folks. So sure. I'll just, uh, I had to write it down because there's so much going on. But really, basically, once Remembrance Day happens, we go into full-on Christ Christmas mode. Okay. So November 15th is Festive Friday, which is a really fun event downtown, um, which involves also uh, our passports, which you can go around and get stamps oh, right. and stuff. Oh, right. That's so it's, fun. It's fun. This year, the Advent calendar, which was up at uh, Sydenham Street, is moving down to Springer Market Square, where the Santa's Village is. That starts on December okay. 1st, and that's a really fun 24-day event. Mm -hmm. November 30th is the beginning of our uh, Christmas uh, Santa, our, our Santa Saturdays. Right. And we have a surprise for that particular uh, Saturday that I'm not gonna share now, but definitely okay. worth marketing, marking it on your calendar. Okay. There'll also be trolleys, horse-drawn carriages, all of that kind of stuff every Saturday. That is fun. Yeah. It's just kind of an old fashioned feel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the city's made for it with the, the historic it's buildings. Perfect. And, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's for sure. November 23rd is the Santa Claus Parade. Uh, the tree lighting afterward last year, we had record numbers at the tree lighting. We had no snow, and it was, you know, a, a decent night. And the entire square was packed. We got some amazing pictures from above. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. we'll do even better this year. Uh, final shopping weekend just for those that sometimes are tardy about getting their mm -hmm. uh, their stuff in order December 20th 21st and we are doing something special for that as well that we haven't announced yet and of course the pewter collection which starts November 18th right right so, so that's so yeah that's before Christmas that is lots that's lots to take in so I understand that you're working closely with the police station we are. Okay. Yeah, we have so, been for a bit. Yeah, so how is, tell me about that. Well, we've always had a, a very good relationship, a working relationship with Kingston Police or since I've been here, which is about three and a half years. Um, so last year, we got together with a number of members and asked, uh, the, we did a presentation with police and the mayor and some councillors and said, we really, we really want our own foot patrol down here and uh, so we raised some funds we pay for we're paying for a, a one-year pilot we pay for half and Kingston police is paying for half we have a wonderful young man uh, constable Braden Longeal downtown with us and uh, he's making a huge difference he's a lovely uh, young officer who loves community and works well with uh, all of the things that happen downtown, not only our members and employees and getting to know the community, but also some of our more vulnerable people on the street. And then, of course, he's fighting crime at the same time, so he's sort of an all-around good guy. And he has a, a sidekick named Constable um, Anthony Colangeli. So he's down there part-time, who's also very effective. And it's really changed the, the atmosphere downtown, feels a lot safer. Um, it's always been safe. Our city is not an unsafe downtown, but sometimes it's perceived that way. Uh, but we've been tracking the data since he came online, which was the end of May, and we have reduced from 2022 and 2023 crime numbers. We've reduced every month from May until September have been over 40% reduction in crime in downtown well, Kingston. 40%? So. 40%. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. My God, what, what kind of uh, crimes, uh, petty, like uh, shoplifting kinds of yeah. crimes? Or are we talking more serious stuff? So I receive a report that's got 40 different crime types on it. I take the top 10. I would say about 80% of, uh, of it is uh, petty theft. Uh, right. We do have the occasional assault or, you know, some kind of anomaly, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not serious crimes, although it's 
you know, it's frustrating, and uh, uh, there are times when there are crimes that you wouldn't consider necessarily criminal, but that are, mm -hmm. that are a crime that but have they, to be they dealt are. with. Yeah. yeah, it's just not, we tend to, oh, is that all kind yeah. of thing. We yeah, and you get conditioned. But, but if you're a, a shop owner and you've got this going on, I, I mean, this is darned annoying It's to lose yeah. that kind of thing, yeah. And I kind of think that, I remember when I was a kid that uh, beat cops were, uh, yeah. of course, you know, in a small town where I was raised, absolutely, and, and I was always told if you ever have a problem, you go and see, you know, someone wearing that uniform, and, and I was raised thinking that somebody's going to help me if I ever get lost or something happens, and um, I, I think that because you get used to seeing them, that maybe, you know, I've got a question for you, because they don't know, they don't want to walk into the police station and ask a question. Mm -hmm. But here's an opportunity. He's just kind of standing there. Maybe I'll just go and ask him a question. So um, yeah. I can see that being a, a, a service that they provide without realizing that they're actually providing a valuable service. Yeah, actually one of the top 10 that we measure is general information. Oh, okay. So when people are just, hey, I've got a question, or you know, I just want to ask. They're not usually standing around. Our officers are usually yeah. running around or on bikes. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, times have changed. Uh, but they also really support another program we have called Welcoming Streets. So oh, yes, what's, that's that, what's that about? Welcoming Streets is, a prog again, a pilot program that uh, we've been running for uh, over a year now, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a year. We're coming up to a year and a half. And that's uh, frontline staff that work out of the BIA office and out of AMHS. And if there's something that's happening on the streets of downtown or inside one of our businesses that is presenting like mental health and addictions challenge or um, somebody who's lacking shelter or food, poverty, anything like that, um, you can call the Welcoming Streets line and our Welcoming Streets mm. social workers will come out and, uh, and see if they can help the individual, guide them to the services that they need in that moment, help connect them to their caseworker if they have one, if not, help connect them to some of the services in town. So it's really reduced police calls as well because we're dealing proactively with some of the, the things that happen that can escalate if they're not taken taken seriously. Well, then so. you've got police involved, maybe an ambulance and, and exactly. a bunch of other things. Yeah, so yeah. it's cost effective in the long run. Yeah, it's very mm. effective. We've got police welcoming streets and bylaw now in the downtown core seven days a week. Uh, police isn't quite seven days. We don't quite have enough money to do seven days. We've got about five. Um, and it's working very effectively and just keeping the community safe and friendly and welcoming, which is mm -hmm. what we want. That is really, yes, yeah. but it, it's so proactive. That's yeah. what I love about it. And it's it. a good it's news story. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. So, so you got a lot of stuff coming up at Christmas. Just give me a teaser about, you say there's something in February. Just give me a teaser. Tell me what's okay. happening. Um, so we got a substantial grant from the federal government to put on a three-week winter festival. Wow. It's called Spirit of Winter, uh, and that's all I can tell you, but right. it is going to be spectacular. So you'll come back and tell us about it, won't you? Yes. <laughs> yes, I will. I'm so, we are so excited. We've already started working on it long ago, and yeah, it's going to be a one-of-a-kind um, and the beginnings of hopefully larger and larger uh, festival in February that people can not only look forward to as locals, but as a destination for others. Yeah. Oh, a great idea. So if people want to know more about what's coming up, especially Christmas and the fall, how can they get more information? Best way is to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, which is downtown Kingston in both cases, the handle. Or if you want to go on to the website, uh, www dot downtownkingston dot ca. Perfect. Thanks so much for coming in today. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs>